Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be just doing a little pottering around in here, giving some of my plants some much needed TLC. I'm actually going to be focusing on some alocasias in here and I thought while I'm doing a little repotting I'll just give you a quick life update because I feel like we haven't had a chit chat in quite a while. So yeah, today we're going to be working on my alocasia poly variegated my Alocasia Heterophylla Dragon's Breath. I have two different little pots of those. My Alocasia Watsoniana, the dark form. I don't even know if you can actually call this a true Watsoniana, but that's how it was sold to me, the dark form of that one. And we're not gonna work on my fry deck because I did that yesterday. I'll show it to you. This is my Alocasia fry deck. I treated it for pests yesterday and repotted it it's looking good it's got a new leaf there's some spider mites on the new leaf but i don't want to spray i don't want to spray it <laughs> just because i don't want it to shrivel up but anyway i repotted it yesterday this is the new pot and watch and see i give it i give it like three days before you start seeing the roots go crazy because this plant is vigorous Anyway, so we won't do this one today, we'll focus on the others and I'll pot them up in similar potting media and hopefully they'll all do well. Okay, so the first plant I'm going to work on today is my Alocasia poly variegated please don't laugh because i say variegated and there's not a hint of pink no variegation to be seen on this guy basically what happened was when i got it it had a, a leaf that had beautiful pink variegation i think a couple of them did and i put it in my grow tent to adjust to being here which maybe is not enough light for this anyway this it produced this leaf which has a tiny sliver of pink here so not bad and a tiny patch of pink and then after that came this one which has absolutely no pink whatsoever and if this continues we'll basically just be the priciest alocasia poly in the world let's hope it doesn't continue anyway i have since moved it out of the grow tent and it's now in the living room where i think it's really happy actually but it needs a new pot so that its roots can you know, so they can do their thing and it can support more leaves. It needs to be wiped down because it's got a couple of spider mites, but that's that's just what this plant does. I'm not too bothered about that. It basically always has spider mites. So I'm gonna clean it down, repot it, give it, hopefully, you know, it being in a new pot with more sustrate and more room to grow will encourage it to go forth and multiply. I'll be using my signature preferred alocasia mix, which is two parts cocoa core, two parts tree fern fiber, and one part Molly's succulent mix, which I know people think that's crazy, but I use succulent mix in the place of perlite. I just like what that does for my alocasias. So yeah, let's start by wiping it down and then we'll move on to the potting. For the wipe down, I'm using this mix. This is a homemade mix of cold pressed neem oil, peroxide, peppermint castile soap and water. I'm just gonna do the backs. And the front. <coughs> the neem is strong. And I'll let it cook for a minute and then I'll give it a wipe down. When I first started keeping plants. I used to do this literally once a week, every Friday, I think, or every Saturday. I would spray all my plants down with this neem mix, wipe all the leaves down. My plants looked incredible, incredible. I never had a single pest. Everything looked so healthy and so stunning. But you know, life gets in the way. And honestly, when you end up with like a hundred plants or whatever, you really, it's almost impossible to give them 
that level of care. So I have been having some conversations with myself, honestly, about plants that are in here that I absolutely adore and things that I'm not obsessed with, I think I might let go. Not loads of them, there's probably only like five, six of them that I just don't really care that much about. Just so I can give the ones that I love, you know, extra TLC. So yeah, that sort of brings me on to life update type stuff because, you know, things have been good. I'm doing well, to be honest. I'm quite happy. But it is kind of, um, it is an interesting period in my life. It's been a funny summer. We've done a lot of traveling this summer. When I say a lot, I mean a lot. We've done a crazy amount of traveling. We spent some time in London. We spent some time in Belfast. We went up the Antrim coast in Northern Ireland. We spent some time in Portugal. Then we came back stateside. We spent some time in Mystic, Connecticut. We spent some time in New Hampshire. And then my sister and her kids came to New York to visit and they stayed with us in this tiny two bedroom apartment, which was lovely, but as you can imagine, very, very chaotic. So having the kids home for summer, working full time, um, trying to care for my plants, trying to make videos for you on, you know, here on YouTube, on TikTok, on Instagram. It's just, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's been a whole lot to keep up with. So I I would be lying if I didn't say that I felt some stress and some sort of pressure is the wrong word. But even though I've loved the summer, it's been very very busy and just there have been so many balls in the air to juggle so as much as i love summer even though it's my favorite season my favorite time of the year i am looking forward to fall because i do think it gives an opportunity for a bit of a reset and just to settle back down into more of a routine both at home you know with myself with the kids with work my job with my family my extended family and with my plants, get back into caring for them regularly, be on a real schedule and, you know, get my videos, get back to getting my videos out more frequently for you guys. So that's, that's sort of what's mostly going on with me. Okay, I've wiped it and I'm gonna move on to making the mix to repot. This table is amazing. Look at that. I feel so grown up. So the mix that I'm using for my, my signature mix that I talked about, I made some yesterday when I potted up the Alocasia fry deck and I still have some left. So this is what I have left, but obviously it's not going to be enough. So I'm just going to mix up some more. Let's start with, this is cocoa coir. So I'm going to put two parts cocoa coir in here. And it goes one, two, and then this is tree fern fiber, and I'll put two parts in here. One. And then this is Molly's succulent mix. And I love Molly's soil mixes. I use their aroid mix, their orchid mix, and their succulent mix. But the two that I absolutely will not go without are the aroid mix and the succulent mix. I actually don't have many succulents. I think I have like, I don't know, there's like four succulents maybe in here. So I'm, I don't use it. I use it for succ the succulents, but not that much. I actually like to use it in lieu of perlite to create a bit, you know, aeration. I like the size of the chunks and I like what's in it, right? I like that it has, let's see, what's in here? What are the ingredients? Yeah, I like, it has bark, pumice, stalite, shale, calcite, dolomite, blah, blah, blah. And it's got that, some of that good 
bacteria, beneficial microorganisms that we all like. So it's basically the same thing as me using something like pumice, but getting lots of different bits of different sizes and also having that beneficial bacteria. I just like it. You got know, some people probably think that's so overkill and I should just use perlite or pumice, but that's how I like to do for my allocations and they like it. So yeah, that's what I do. So I've done two parts each of the cocoa core and the tree fern and then I do one part of this succulent mix for mummies. Oh, gotta be careful not to spill. Look at my steady hands. I'm surgical with it. Okay, so here's this is the this is the succulent mix. I think this is a good looking. I'll put a tiny bit more. I really like this stuff. Anyway. So this is what I do and I put my allocations up in this and I water them with fertilizer and mycorrhizae and they go crazy. They really do. So I'm just going to mix this up. Pull my chair up like an adult. Okay. I feel so official with my potting table. I can't believe I didn't do this sooner. My back would have been so happy. Okay, grab my trusting, trusty packing mat. Anyway, so yeah, once, I guess, once fall comes and I feel like I'm in a good sort of routine, then I think I'll be able to catch my breath and catch up with a lot of the plant shows around here and everything. Although, that being said, I feel like fall is basically the busiest time of all the Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. It goes completely crazy around here. And you know, when you have children, everything just goes into overdrive because there's always some school fundraiser or something or whatever that we have to we have to go we you know we have to do stuff for. So I don't know if I'm gonna get the reprieve I want. But I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try. Okay, I'm using this pot because it's currently in this pot. I'd love to go into something taller, but I don't want to overwhelm the rubble. I'm nervous to drown this guy because I'm hoping that it will still, you know, it will still produce some pink variegation for me and that just getting better light will help it, you know, do what I need it to do. So. That's my hope. Um, so I'm going to pot it into this so it's not too much. And I'm just grab a quick drink because repotting is the story. I'm obsessed with Spindrift. I, I don't know what it is. I just, I can't stop drinking them. I'm going to put some of the mix here in the bottom half of the pot. Now, I used to sprinkle the mycorrhizae at this point, but now I just, I water my plants with it every time. So I've stopped bothering. I'm just going to water with it. Um, okay, so here's round one of the potting mix. I'm just going to wet this a little bit. I'm going to get my watering can and wet it a little bit so that um, the roots, you know, relax into the whole thing. I'll link everything I'm using down in the description in case you want to get any of these items yourself. But I'm just watering it with mycorrhizae and fertilizer. I use a whole variety of fertilizers. Right now I'm using Dynagro Foliage Pro. So I water it with that. Ooh. Okay, look at the roots. Hmm. Oh no, they look all right. Some of them are kind of starting to get mushy. There's a corm here. I think, I think it really needs this repot. I think we we're heading for like Root Rot Central, to be honest. I don't know if some of them are already rotten or what's happening. Anyway, whatever, there are corms in there. So I feel like babies, babies are, <laughs> babies are possible. I, I don't think, these are the, these corms are ready for harvesting, so I'm not going to take them out. I'm just going to give it some something to grow into. 
And now, quickly backfill it. Oh no. One. Shake it up. One thing that I would have done differently is to not have left it in my green, my, you know, my grow tent for as long. So when I got it, it was such a tiny, tiny baby. And I just wasn't sure if it was going to be, it came in winter. I just wasn't sure if it's going to be okay in my, my living room. Humidity is so low in winter, which is fine for established plants, to be honest. But for baby plants, it can be tough. So, I put it in the tent, you know, so that it could get some, some TLC, but I probably left it in there for a little bit too long. So I'm just trying to remedy that now. Bury some of the stem, not too much. Okay. Now with alocasias, I just try not to pack it too much because then that will defeat the purpose of all the aeration. And you just tap it, tap, 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 so that everything falls into place, tap. It's good and tapped. And I'm gonna water it. Like you can see where I had initially watered it too. You can see the line and the rest is filled in nicely. So I'm gonna water it and that's it, all done. All done with this. Alocasia poly variegated. So this is one of my favorite plants. I'm really hoping that now that I've repotted it and plus given that it's sitting like out here in good light, I'm hoping that it can now thrive. It's not because it's not, I don't think it's a difficult plant actually. It's been quite easy going. I just, I really, I was really behind on my care. I just wasn't taking care of it. Now we'll see how it does. Alocasias throw often throw tantrums when you repot them i tried not to disturb the roots just now when i repotted it but these guys you just there's no telling whether it's going to be happy with what you've done or not so they're just kind of winging it hoping for the best anyway this guy's done on to the next i was planning to repot this one but I've had a look and I don't think, oh, holy cow, look, there's a, there's a corm right at the top here. I'm not sure if I should repot it or just let it, like it seems to really be settling into this pot and I don't know that it's really ready for a new pot per se. I might try and get some, instead of repotting it today, maybe I'll just cover Whew, I don't know what to do. Should I repot it or not? This is tricky. Hmm. I kind of want to get potting mix above this though, so maybe I will just give it a slightly bigger pot. Okay, I'm gonna use this pot. Like it's not much bigger than this one, but I just think it will allow it a bit more room to thrive. So And also this, I think, has been in here for like six months. So it's probably depleted most of the nutrients in there by now. I'll just say change is good. Hopefully it'll encourage it to perk up. Oh. For the last of the growing season. So yeah, what a cutie. Okay, so it's got nice roots. To be honest, it doesn't really, like I said, it don't really need the new pot. That being said, the roots are, it's doing well. Good roots. There's a corm right there already. Like, make, establish yourself before you start trying to do the most, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna cover the new corm. It'll probably spit out. I'm not sure if it will sprout or not. I should tell. Um, like all the alocasias here, it's pretty close to the south window, so. When I got this one, honestly, I wasn't sure what kind of light this guy liked, so I had it a bit further away from the window, but I think that was less than ideal. This, it gave this one, which was good, then it gave this tiny one, 
And then it got spider mites, which was really annoying. I'm just going to spray the back right now, just to be sure. Anytime I do anything with alocasias, get that spray, just to be safe. Because I don't trust you guys not to have spider mites. Sorry. Anyway, this one's done. I'm going to water it. Micro rosé and fertilizer. Okay. This one's done. I think it's going to be happy. I'm just going to spray the front as well. Just in case any spider mites are lurking. And wipe it down. I, I wipe them with a microfiber cloth after I spray them. I wipe the front first. There will always be fewer bugs on the front. The back is where they're always hiding. I wipe the front first and then the back. To be honest, the neem oil should kill them on contact, so it's not really, I don't know, it's not a big deal. I don't see any, but this is more of a preventative, if you will, because I know it has had them. As you can see, it's still showing some of that damage. Like while I was on, while I was on my European adventure, my plants all suffered. Everybody was horribly underwatered everybody had spider mites so i'm just trying to nurse them all back to good health mm. repotting these guys is a nice step anyway that's this one done um it's got a new leaf on the way although i'm sure i've just slowed that down by repotting it there's another corm in there i'm hoping that some of this extra energy from the fresh sustret <laughs> is gonna help on to the next one okay this next one is relatively straightforward this is one of my alocasia heterophylla dragon's breath this one is i planted a corm that i pulled off of the mother plant back there although the mother plant is basically the daughter of the original mother who kicked the bucket so this is the granddaughter whatever <laughs> anyway i planted i just put a corm in this naked root planter it's only been in here i don't know a few weeks and it's already doing the most so this is the original one that i planted it's already sprouted this over here and then looking closer i see another corm sprouting there's a third one these guys pop like mad probably more than any alocasia i've owned so just be prepared for that so i'm gonna just take the opportunity today to repot it into once the next size up of these naked root planters because it seems to really like that this is what it looks like there's just water in the bottom and as you can see the root system is looking nice probably could stay in here some more but looking at what's happening i think i'll just get it out so it's going into this guy i'm gonna put fill the soil up to here and then put the plant in This is good. Now to pull this guy out. I really, I don't, I was surprised at how much I like this planter. Naked Root Planters sent them to me to try out and so I gave, I used the smaller, planted a corm in the smaller one because I just thought, you know, try it out on something that I'm not like, that I have a duplicate of in case I don't like I'm ripping the roots now. So. I've lost a bunch of the roots by ripping that. Look at that. So that's not ideal. <laughs> I probably could have been a bit more gentle and managed to save all this root mass that I've lost. I've lost a lot of root. Okay. To me, that's, that's probably a downside of planting alocasia in this type of planter is the roots are so fine that it's difficult to remove it from the planter without losing a lot of the roots. Like I think this is probably more ideal for like an anthurium, something with thicker roots that won't necessarily get through the air holes. So maybe I'll try that next time. That being said, like I said, this plant is so prolific, a little root pruning is not gonna hurt it. It'll probably throw a tantrum because I've repotted it, but that's what alocasias 
do. I'm not too bothered. Gonna backfill this. Like so. This is going quite swimmingly. I'm almost out of potting media. I might have to mix up some more to finish. I actually only have one more alocasia to do after this, so I'm not sure how much more media I should mix up. But anyway. There we go. Put some on this side. Just trying to not to fill it too much actually. Because of watering. Mm-hmm. So I'll go like this. Okay. That's good actually. That's plenty. And this is its little form that it sits in. And then you water it through here, actually. So when the water level is low, you water it. But the first time, you always water it from the top, just so that the whole thing gets nice and saturated. That's what I'm doing now, watering it from the top. Just paying attention to that hole so that the water level doesn't rise too much. Anyway, I think it's I think it's nice and full. I'll just leave it like this for now. Um, and after it's settled into this, I'll start watering it through this little hole here, just filling it whenever. See, I can't fill the water yet, but that's because it's still soaking through. Let's have a look. Yeah, the water's dripping through nicely in there. Mm, does it need more? No, really. I think it's okay. I think it's all right. Maybe a little more. Okay. So this one's done. And like the others, give her a quick spray. Be gentle with... This is... The tiny baby is delicate, so I need to be gentle with how I spray it. Spray. Okay. I've got one more. <coughs> Neem is... I might have put too much neem in this mix. Every time I spray it, it's just like burns my nostrils. Anyway. All right, so this one's done. Pretty, right? And last but not least, this guy. Now, this one is gonna be a little bit of work because Look at what I'm dealing with. As you can see, I might have waited a little too long to repot and the roots have gone insane. Insane. I really don't want to lose all this. I mean, this is a lot of root ball to lose. So I'm not sure what's going to happen. I'm going to try to tease it out a bit. See if I can save any of it. I might have to, I might have to go cut off the pot. I'm going to go cut off the pot and then I also want to trim some of these leaves. So while I was gone, spider mites had their way with this guy and so some of these old leaves look horrible. I'm going to get rid of them. So this one can go. Bye. This one can go. Bye. This one looks alright, but I think it can go. Bye. This one definitely needs to go. Okay. Okay. So, I'm being kind of ruthless, um, but there's so many crumbs in here that, like, once I repot it, I think we should be on our way to good things. I'm just going to cut off anything that I think looks bad. This is me. Okay. This can go. I'm basically butchering this poor thing, but it does have this beautiful, beautiful new leaf. 
So I just feel like, what do you need the old, like, destroyed, ugly one for? And you have nice new stuff. You know what I'm saying? I'm cutting off anything that looks bad. You. Yeah. Is this? Yes, this can go. And then this. Okay. I've basically cut off most of the leaves from the original part. This seems like a much smaller part. But like all the new leaves are perfect. Look how beautiful they are. They're big. They're gorgeous. These are fantastic. So I think it was worth it. Believe it or not, I was able to get most of the root ball off intact. I lost there was a tiny leaf that was growing out of the pot here. I've had to say goodbye to that, but who cares? There are so many corms sprouting here anyway that I don't think it's not an issue. I don't see any. There aren't any on the outside that are so obvious that I should pull off. So I'm just going to let it do its thing. I'm going to be potting it in a deeper pot finish off what's left of my mix. Okay. Let me make some more. Shove the big boy in here. It just about fits, doesn't it? I wonder if I should have gone for a slightly bigger pot. I just don't, I don't know. I just don't want to rock the roots, you know. It's too. Prospect of rotting the roots is very real. I wonder if I potted that too high. But the roots do grow downwards, so. If I see any corms at the top, I'm honestly just gonna pick them off and bend them. I do not need more Alocasia Heterophylla Dragon's Breath. Drowning in the stuff. Just put it on here to shake it. It wasn't bad actually. That's it. All my alocasias successfully repotted. Well, all except for one. I don't have too many alocasias, right? My alocasias successfully repotted and I'm feeling a whole lot lighter. A little bit like I took back a tiny smidgen of control of my life. And if I could do the alocasias, I can do the rest of them. So I'm looking forward to getting these plants back on track, getting my life back on track and yeah, hanging out with you a lot more. But, you know, till next time, I'll see you.